Hey guys, I'm Johnny, and I'm Johnny on the trail. Thanks for being here. Uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, my channel is about hiking and adventures. And today I'm doing something just a little different. I'm doing an interview for Hot Magazine. Stick around for that. All right, so I am here with Johnny Osborne. Thank you, Johnny, for coming on today. Uh, we've been following each other for a while on Instagram and on Facebook and um, kind of got to know each other a little bit. And um, yeah, it's great to have you on. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's an honor to meet you as well and, and glad to be here too. So go ahead and why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your hiking background. Sure. Um, back when I was a young kid, my parents took me and my sister hiking often so much. Um, and as we got older in teenage years, we kind of got out of that hiking thing. Um, and I was running a lot of marathons and stuff back just several years ago. And my sister had just previously started hiking again. And she invited me to come hiking with her. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna put it off and run and not go. Eventually, after her keep at her, after she'd asked me several times, um, I agreed to go hiking with her. And as they say, the rest is history. I've kind of fell in love with it again and haven't stopped hiking since. So is she your little sister or older sister? She's younger sister. Yeah, I hiked with her. She's very persistent then. <laughs> she is very persistent. Yeah, I think she didn't want to be alone in the woods by herself. And now she's doing solo hikes and she's doing so, so great. But uh, she, at the time, she wanted me to come with her and company and help encourage her, and and now she's encouraging me. So we encourage each other, I guess, is the way it should be. I think be. that's great. Yeah. Well, that's great um, for you guys to go out together. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, I've been following her adventures as well. Oh, and cool. I think she just completed her 900-miler, right? Yes, she finished her 900-miler back in March. And as far as we know, we're the only siblings that have done a Smokey's map. Okay, yeah. And, Which and is for the cool. listeners just to kind of bring everyone up to speed. So we're talking about the Great Smoky Mountains uh, National Park and it's completing what's called the 900 miler. So uh, the 900 mile is basically, I don't think it's 900 miles that you actually do hike, right? But it's considered all of the trails in the park. Yeah, that's right. It's a little over 800 miles total, I believe. And they call it 900 miler, which is really uh, interesting that you brought that up. One of my next uh, goals is to f hike the 100 plus trails that are off trails or closed to trails to actually do the 900 miles. Oh, I've not heard of that one. Yeah, it's not really. No, that a, sounds it, really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's not really a challenge. It's just, you know, the park over the years have closed trails due to whatever landslides or just down trees or whatever. And those trails are still on the old maps. They're not only the new maps, but they're still there. And the trails are not in good shape at all. They're in horrible shape. But uh, this is definitely something I wouldn't recommend just to anyone going out and doing because you really need to know navigation. You really need to know how to use a compass and a map and all that good stuff and know how to read a topo map and not, you know, be safe about it. So. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Yeah. For for uh, people who are going to go off trail mm -hmm. or consider, you know, doing that to, to one, understand, you know, how to navigate and what you're getting into. Um, so obviously the Smokies are in your backyard basically, right? They are. In fact, I'm <laughs> sitting here right now looking outside at them. They're, I mean, I'm, I'm in, I'm just, they're probably, they, really are. they yeah. really are your backyard. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm really envious of you. Um, I love the Smoky Mountains and I try as much as I can to get, well, it's down there from where I'm at right now in uh -huh. Michigan, but um, but I was lucky enough uh, over the last few years to spend a lot of time there um, when I was working uh, in Atlanta. So I would try to get up there and obviously that's, that's how I fell in love with the Smokies and then of course, how I got introduced to you as well of, uh, of kind of that shared love of, of hiking and, and right. being in that area so you so you started hiking when you were younger then you um with your family and then you said you were doing a lot of marathons or, or some you know more of the running and then got back into hiking so 
I guess, um, you know, I think that's an interesting point because I, I'm not a runner, but I can imagine, um, you know, I've interviewed some trail runners and, and things like that. So were you doing any trail runs um, or have you also do you do trail running plus hiking or, or what is that? Um, I have. I've done several miles of, of trail running in the Smokies and outside the Smokies. Uh, trail running is just a different breed. Um, mm -hmm. I have several friends that uh, run in the Smokies as often as they can. Every time they're in the Smokies, they're running. And I just think that's fascinating because there's a lot of trails in the Smokies I don't think I'd want to run. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> there's a, I, I just I have a lot of, um, I guess, admiration for the trail runners because I'm always tripping over something. Uh -huh. And especially in the Smokies with all the um, different routes and rocks and you know it's it can be pretty rough yeah so they're sure-footed definitely absolutely so you were talking about how your sister completed her 900 miler in um in march so when did you complete yours um i completed mine in october of 2018 so not too awful long before her so how long did it take you to um, to do the whole map it took me a couple of years to complete it, and that's just like when when she reintroduced me to hiking, or got me hiking with her again. I'm like, yeah, I've got to do this too. This is so cool. So, yeah, about two years. Okay, so it's um, when you were going through that and kind of you know figuring out, you know, doing all the the different trails that are on the official map. Mm -hmm. Was there a strategy that you had, or I guess? You know, I've seen that there's books out or, you know, kind of, or at least one book that I, I did come across of trying to day hike the Smokies and maybe, you know, pull it all together. But what, what did you do? Great question. Um, I did reference that same book as well. Um, I really focused on areas further away from me first and work, worked my way back home or back to this side of the Smokies, but I started out doing lower mileage, like, you know, what I call lower mileage, 10 mile, 15 mile, working my way okay. up to 20, 25, some 30 as a day hike. So did, was there a certain section that was your favorite? Oh, absolutely. I love Hazel Creek area. Hazel Creek Trail is probably one of my favorite trails in the Smokies. I just okay, love for, it. Go ahead. For people who aren't, um, familiar with it, where is it at? Like okay. if you can kind of give a general indication. Sure. Um, it's, it's between Fontana Lake and Clemens Dome is kind of the way to, it's, it's, okay. the, it's probably the one of the farthest, most remote trails in the Smokies. Um, I, we, my sis and I and some friends usually hike it every fall because the leaves are beautiful. Um, oh, wow. And the creek, uh, Hazel Creek is just absolutely stunning. It's just one of the most beautiful creeks I think in the in the entire Smokies. Then you come out right by the lake and boat shuttle across to, to leave. I'm going to so, definitely have to put that mm -hmm. on my to-do list. Um, fall in the Smokies is is really beautiful. Sure is. I've, uh, I've been lucky enough, uh, I think it's the Middle Prong Trail that I've done in the fall and mm -hmm. it, it was just spectacular. Just yeah. beautiful color, the, the, um, the river was gorgeous and um, all the different uh, falls that are along the way. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely a great time to be in the Smokies. So you told me about your kind of one of your most favorite. Was there one that was, I guess, the most challenging for you? I guess it depends on what the challenge was. Sometimes the challenge was not necessarily the trail. It was just getting to the trail or mm -hmm. putting in 15 miles to a backtracking trail time to get to a trail that was you know, maybe five miles long or something. You know, that I think that was the most challenging part for me is just some of the backtracking that I had to do to get to some of the other trails. As far as the challenging tra trip trails, I don't think there were any that anyone couldn't do. I mean, I think they're all very doable and just do them at your own pace. Did, uh, what was the one that you decided to to do at the end, did you, and did you plan that? I mean, what was your last trail? Um, my last trail was um, Jake's Creek and it wasn't really um, planned. It was kind of, I had the last, well, I guess I, the last five trails that I had left today, I kind of chose from those five, which one <clears throat> I was gonna 
leave as my final trail, which one made more sense for uh, friends to come and celebrate with me or hike it with me. And that's kind of why I ended on, on that one because there's plenty of parking and it's a great location. So yeah, I, I think for people who aren't familiar with it, um, if you do look up, you know, people that have done the 900 mile, um, part of the 900 miler club, basically uh, at the very end, a lot of them do have their friends, their family, um, all the loved ones come and celebrate, um, do a little hiker tunnel, mm -hmm. um, you know, to to finish it off. So tell me, what's that like? I mean, because you, you did that with your sister, I, I did see that, and, and then for yourself. So tell me a little bit about how that feels. Yeah, my last hike was with my sister and my friend Jimmy and his daughter Callie, who I've hiked a lot of miles with in the Smokies. But uh, when we, um, I don't know, a mile or so before the, the, the hiker tunnel, they went ahead and I, I kind of stayed back a little bit just to reflect on, on the journey, mm -hmm. um, to, to, uh, to absorb what all we've seen and done and hiked and talked about and just all those thoughts and things that were, you know, in my mind and those feelings. They were surreal for one. I, I had tears in my eyes. I mean, it just, to me, it was an amazing accomplishment. And uh, so I did that up until I got to the hiker tunnel. Of course, I was still in tears at the hiker tunnel because I didn't know who was going to show up, if anyone would. Um, I'm glad my, some of my friends did show up. It's, that was pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, just an eyeful of tears. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just, just so much joy and happiness. That's, that's really what hiking's all about, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. It's, enjoying the time out there being able to reflect um, while you're out there is one of my favorite parts and I mean especially when you're out in the mountains um, and then you know you're able to then culminate and and share that joy with with people you love so mm -hmm. I can imagine that's a, that was an awesome experience it absolutely was so have you always kind of liked doing challenges has that been kind of part of your personality? <laughs> That's another good question. Um, I believe so because I'm working on a second challenge now. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, before hiking, you know, running a 5K was, was, was my goal and then a half marathon and then a full marathon and then another full, you know. So it okay. keeps going on and on and on in the hiking challenge and then another hiking challenge. And um, yeah, I think I'm driven by goals. So tell me about this most recent goal that you have right now. What what are you doing? Um, the the challenge that I'm doing currently is the South Beyond Six Thousand. Um, I'm not sure how many finishers there are of that though, but it's where um, it's an organized challenge um, organized by the uh, Carolina Mountain Club, and okay. it's to encourage hikers to climb uh, the forty six thousand foot peaks in the Southern Appalachian Mountains. And right now I've got 23 of the 40 completed. So I have 17 summits left. Oh, wow. So yeah. there's 40 <laughs> yeah. total mm -hmm. and they're all um, 6,000 or above. That's right. And you said you have 17 left? That's right. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I guess some of them you can probably knock off in a row. I mean, it, it, you know, especially if you're going somewhere maybe in the Smokies where you hit a couple different peaks. Um, but how, how are you, like, or is there a spreadsheet? Like, how, how do you even put this all together? Yeah, they're, they're kind of arranged by region. So there's the, those okay. in the Smokies. I think there's 12 in the Smokies. There are 10 in the Great Balsams. There are three in the Rhone Mountains, uh, the Black Mountain Crest Trail around Asheville, uh, Mount Mitchell. I, th I think there's 10 or 12 there. So I'm kind of just knocking them out by region and going from there. Okay, so when you complete it, is, is there a patch you get? Is there anything, you know, kind of bragging rights, I guess, to you? Yeah, it's kind of like the 900 miler. I'll get a patch and I get a certificate, um, and my name goes on the in the logbook um, for having completed those that challenge. So you mentioned the Carolina Mountain Club. Um, I know uh, I've heard of it before. Um, and, you know, former uh, guest, I think, uh, Danny uh, Bernstein, Bernstein, I'll have to make sure I know her name, but um, I know Danny, when she came on, 
she uh, does leads hikes for the Carolina Mountain Club. Mm-hmm. So, are you part of any hiking clubs too, or um, are you? I, I guess I was just curious. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not a part of any any club. Um, just a Facebook group. Okay. So yeah, tell me about um, because. I'm part of your Facebook group too. Okay, cool. So tell me about the Facebook group that you started. Okay. Um, I started a Facebook group called Hiking the Smokies um, a couple of years ago. And it was when I was working on my map and was needing information on some trails and didn't really know where to find information. So I started this group and added a few people, a few key people, thankfully. Okay. And, and they knew people that added people. And it was a, it was a great uh, uh source of information and, and it's continued to grow. We're over 21,000 members now, which is amazing. Wow. Yeah. So I, I think it's just, it's just a great page. Um, I had written in my notes that, uh, you know, it's, it's good that people can go on there and go, Hey, I need a hiking partner Saturday. Who's available. And you know, somebody will usually step up or I'll need a, a shuttle ride. You know, can someone let pick me up or take me there? And that's usually the things that happen. I think it's just amazing that, that people have come together like that. Have you done any official meetups as part of the group? Uh, yeah, we've done a few group hikes. Um, we're trying to get more focused on doing some group activities, more group activities. Um, but it's been, it's, it's tough for me to, to do that and run, run the page when I'm out doing these challenges and who knows where, you know, just wherever I am. Um, Just about every weekend I'm out in the Smokies or out in the, out somewhere um, doing a challenge, doing part of this challenge. So yeah, I think we do want to get back to doing um, more group hikes. I think we're going to start doing that very soon. No, I think that would be great. Yeah. That allows some people to, to get together in a, in a, a bigger setting to explore i know some people um, are uncomfortable like you said they mm-hmm. want to you know grab a hiking partner or someone to help them with shuttles and, and things like that because yeah some of the hikes uh you are going to want to do a shuttle and have you know one car at the end and, and one at the beginning mm-hmm. so that that makes sense too especially if you're trying to you know get your 900 mile um, certificate um, and map completed um so do you do you do a lot of solo hiking or are you um, they're kind of a mix between I am a hiking. mix I do hike a lot solo but um seem like anymore if someone wants to come with me so yeah and that's, that's fine I love I love to, to go out and talk and and I can hike all, I can hike eight hours and talk for eight hours it's just amazing uh, <laughs> but uh yeah I, I do a little bit of both I mean I like the quiet time when it's just me and I can hike my own pace and you know, usually get in and get out pretty quick or with uh, other people the same or just, you know, just like I said, just enjoying conversation. So now that you're also thinking of exploring some of the manways and mm-hmm. older trails, um, are you, you know, where are you getting some of your information from, from um, some people that had done it before you or, you know, maybe looking up some things online or uh, where, where do you find that? Okay, um, I just recently had taken an, an intermediate navigation class and I've, I've known how to read a compass and a map for, for a while since I've been hiking, but I wanted to up it a little bit doing this South Beyond 6000 challenge that, you know, just in case, I wanted to know where I am. You know, I think it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's good to know where, where we are on the map and know the how to read the topo. So going back to doing those those off trail hikes like that. There's those old maps are out there. There's some online, um, but the key is you really have to do your research. You have to do your homework prior to going. I don't think you could just pull into the park lot and go, well, I'm going to hike, you know, this old man way today. And it's about, you know, five miles. And it, you know, you may not, you may not find the trail. You may not find the end of the trail. And I, I feel like for me, I want to be safe about doing those off trail hikes and being smart about it because I mean there you you could get hurt someone anyone could get hurt out there if they don't know what what's going on and don't do their homework prior to doing that so just reading old maps reading uh, some books uh, talking to um, I do have some uh, 
mentors that I have uh, reached out to for advice and information on some of those trails. And some of them they've hiked already and some of them they haven't. So in doing that, what kinds of things do you bring with you um, when you're in that situation? You know, like a, like your 10 essentials or, mm-hmm. or basically when you're you're going to be out in the backcountry? Um, well, obviously my compass and map, uh, my water filter, uh, shelter, food, a little bit of food. I don't usually eat a whole lot on the, on the trail. Um, of course, my first aid kit, that's, that's very high on my priority list. Um, just items like that. I don't, I can't remember them all off the top of my head. Do you have a, so I know that when I'm in the Smokies, um, there's just pretty, you know, spotty where I will have a cell service. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a, like a satellite communicator or, or do you just kind of, um, you know, leave your itinerary with someone? Yeah, I usually let someone know where I am, where I'm going, what time mm-hmm. I'm coming back. I don't have any satellite uh, or any beacon or anything that, tells anybody where I am other than just me saying hey I'm going to this area of the Smokies and I should be back at this time at this date and that's usually how I do it have you had ever any kind of um issues on the trail or where something did happen and you came back late or, or any of that or has it been pretty um, good I, I haven't had any issues where I've had to stay overnight I've had issues not really an issue I've had a time where I was out hiking and it took a little bit longer than I thought it would and I didn't get back to well after dark but I did pack uh, my headlamp okay. yeah that's good yeah <laughs> I, I learned that early on I I went up um let's see Brushy Mountain uh-huh. I was what past uh uh Trillium Oh, the Chilean app. Yeah, the Grotto Ball. Uh-huh. And went up there and, you know, it was, it gets dark really quick <laughs> in the does. Smokies. And you don't realize that. And yeah. and I remember, you know, I just had my cell phone and yeah, there was a flashlight on it, but, I, you know, I'm by myself and I I was pretty nervous coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, for one thing, I, I thought, I don't know, do they, do they lock the gate? I don't know if they're <laughs> going to close the gate on me. I'm going to be stuck out here. Uh, yeah, and so I, I did get out, but I think the only thing I saw on my way down, I, I saw a fox on the way out, and it's like, well, he's wanting to go somewhere too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but yeah, no, I think a headlamp is probably essential. I do too. Uh, when, yeah. you're, when you're out there. Um, so have you done overnights? Uh, you were talking about overnights, but have you done any of that in the Smokies at all? Do you do any of the of camping out there? Oh yeah, uh, tons of it. Uh, even with my 900 miler, um, I would go out and put in a 40 or 50 mile weekend. Just go out, hike mm-hmm. 20, 25 miles, set up camp. Next morning, hike 20, 25 miles now. So I've done that quite a bit, and I and I, I, I camp, I backpack year round. So I'm and I'm a hammock camper uh, usually. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I do I do hammock in the winter time. And, and really? Summer, mm-hmm. Well, this it's a little different when you're down there, but I mean, you're still gonna get snow. I yeah. guess depending on where you're gonna go. True. It's so. still it's still cold. It's still cold. <laughs> I know, but I'm thinking of winter up in the north. True. But uh, but yeah. So okay. So you do. I've always wondered about that about hammock camping because mm-hmm. you know I've just recently got into um, more into you know camping and I'm trying to work up I did some solo camping and trying to work my way up into doing some backcountry next Great. Uh, so um, but you know I have a tent um, mm-hmm. I do have a hammock I just I don't know how I I mean I guess I would be worried about something coming up <laughs> I guess I could come up in the tent too um, did you, so speaking of that did you encounter did you have any bear encounters um, you know I had one bear encounter at Tricorner Knob um, it was shortly after I started my, my 900 miler challenge and I was washing my coffee cup out at the water source. It, this was when the water source was the farther away than it is uh-huh. currently. And this bear just within feet walked up behind me, never heard it, saw it or anything until oh, wow. I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. And I left my, I had just filled up my water bladder and uh-huh. I had it laying there beside me. I was rinsing out my coffee cup and when I did see the bear, I stood up and walked, you know, back to the shelter. And the bag turned my water bladder over. And when he did that, he kind of 
he didn't do it on purpose, but he shredded the whole bag. And yeah, and I did have one extra water bottle with me, not bladder, but bottle. And that, that, that got me through two more days and then out. But uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was, wasn't aggressive at all. It, uh, in fact, I went back and kind of clapped and got real loud and, and scared it away. But the bear came back around and uh, sat by the shelter and kind of peeked in the under the roof of the shelter. I was telling some of the others that were there, I'm like, we need to go ahead and pack up and go. It was late morning. It was probably 7.30 or 8, I think. And so we quickly packed our bags and uh, I gathered my things and we left. I'm sure the bear went into the shelter after we were gone, but I didn't want to be in the shelter with the bear. Yeah, when he, when he wanted to come check it out for, right. for his own self. No, that's a good point though. Of, um, you know, I think one of the things that people um, do worry about is the wildlife encounters. Mm -hmm. And um, so you were talking about one of the things you said was making the noise and kind of trying to, to I guess, alert the bear. You, the bear, uh, you didn't know it was coming up on you, but trying to, you know, make your presence known. So uh, do you carry any bear spray at all? No, I don't carry any bear spray. Uh, don't wear a bell, anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, I've hiked upon so many bears and I've never once, and that's just, maybe I'm lucky, but I've never had an issue. That's what I've heard as well for the most part is that, um, you know, normally they're going to see you and scatter off and exactly. you know, take off and, and that, um, bear spray really is probably going to hurt you more than yeah. anything else. Yeah. I've heard that too. So, yeah. and, and the wild yeah. hogs will run too. They'll run from you as soon as they hear you. They, from what I, from what I've read, the boars and the wild hogs, they don't see very well. So they usually hear you first. And then when they do see you, they run. So I've had one kind of just kind of eye me out of the corner of his eye. And I was like, I had my hiking uh, poles like just ready to defend myself if I had to. But he, he uh, quickly ran off too. But they, they usually run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were talking about, you know, the South Beyond Challenge mm -hmm. and and doing the peaks and um, and that you had another one lined up um, for afterward for the the true like 900 miles another 100 miles of, of backcountry. Um, so what other kind of things do you have lined up though just from maybe just getting out on the trail beyond the challenges is, is there any place that you're really hoping to get to this year or, or just to, to spend some time doing? Um, yeah, I've, I've actually started preparations, um, researching some areas out west to go and spend a week or two out there doing some hiking. I'd like to go and visit uh, Zion, uh, maybe the Grand Canyon area, um, some of those places. So I think those are some areas I'm really looking into going to next, hopefully next spring is my plan. So you're documenting your hikes obviously on the Facebook page and mm -hmm. through Instagram, but aren't you also doing video? I think you're also doing video, aren't you? I am, yeah, I'm on YouTube, uh, doing YouTube videos, and um, started doing those, I guess, a couple of years ago too. So how do you feel about that? Like, what do you think, um, being able to put the video aspect, have you been trying to just capture um, you know, the hike so other people know um, what it's like and kind of to help inform people or tell me a little bit more about the video. Sure. Um, when I was doing my first map, I was looking, I would always do research on trails anyway. And I would even, after my research, I would go to YouTube and see if there was any information or video on that particular trail that I was going to hike. Cause I thought it was kind of cool information to know whether it's something good to see or something that's knowledgeable, like there's a water source there or or whatever. But I got to find that a lot of the non-tourist trails, they're just, there's not much documentation on those. And um, so I just had the idea to uh, film those hikes of those trails, just so that others that may be wanting to do the 900 miler or just in general wanting information on that trail it was there for them to see or to find. 
And not only do I film it, but also in my description of the videos, I usually put in a trail report is what I call it. Okay. So I'll definitely link to that in my show notes so that people can go out there and, and kind of do some, some of their own research and, yeah. and look at your videos. Um, you know, you're talking about that, though, uh, when you said the non-tourist trails. Mm -hmm. um, so many people, um, there's so many visitors that's, you know, that's what the most visited park, um, right. the Great Smoky Mountains. And I think, you know, obviously because there's no fee to go in and, mm -hmm. and there's, you know, the 441 Newfound Gap Road that just goes right through. So it's 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 really kind of uh, easy having, you know, Cherokee on one end and um, Gatlinburg on the other to, to kind of bring those tourists in. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what do you recommend though for people to get a more, I guess, wild experience or just kind of move beyond, you know, Clingman's Dome or, <laughs> you know, going to, you know, something like that. What, what would you recommend as your kind of intro into the Smokies? Um, I would encourage someone to look at loop hikes uh, not necessarily a really long one, but there's several, you know, for uh, under 10 mile loop hikes that aren't necessarily tourist trails. I think that are easily 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 uh, hikeable. Um, I think I would start with that, but you know, and and two, you know, just a lot of those are point to point trails. You know, it's kind of hard for a, a, someone vacationing to. Uh, bring two cars you know they don't really know anybody here and and they have rented maybe one car when they got when he flew in you know and some of those are difficult to do so i think the loop hikes is where i would go with with those as far as getting outside of that crowd per se yeah and and then of course um to probably you know ahead of time they could also look you know on facebook because you can be a member of uh, the hiking, uh, the Smokies group, and you don't have to live there. You know, you could, That's right. um, you know, be a member and kind of connect with people and, and get more of a insider's mm -hmm. experience um, beyond just, you know, the, the major things that people know about, which, you know, like I said, it was like Clingham and Clingman's Dome and Cates Cove and, and places that can get pretty crowded. Um, so what uh, would you say, um, I guess is your favorite thing. I guess if you had a favorite thing about uh, the Smokies, what would it be? Um, to me, my favorite thing about the Smokies is the closeness of the community that we have with okay. one another. You know, through the Facebook group, uh, my Instagram, my YouTube. Um, let's see here. It's just I don't know. It's it's just been amazing. I I, I like what we've done. We've we've had members that, um, like they will reach out and need a car shuttle or need a hiking partner, and they're they're easily available. Uh, we had some members last year um, who um, spent every evening and every weekend just out of the goodness of their hearts for no money, no not no anything, just want just shuttling AT hikers from Newfound Gap to to Gatlinburg all day long that was what they wanted to do that's how they gave back um and I have you run into um many through hikers on your own hiking oh yeah so many and i love to stop and talk to them and if they're not from if i'm in the smokies and and or we're in the smokies and they're not from here i'm like oh well welcome to the smokies this is my backyard if you need anything or if you need any questions like you know ask me i'm here um yeah, we, we yeah talk to them all the time, and, and they're they're great people to talk to. Have you considered ever doing <laughs> the whole um, Appalachian Trail? Thought that one might come up. You know, yeah, um, I would love to do it. I think um, my friend Evan hiked it last year, and I'm not sure that he was. Uh, I'm not sure if he, he he did tell me if he were to do it again, he had a chance to do it again. He probably wouldn't have done it. I would have, you know, would have backed out, but I think I would have done it, or I would do it. I, I, I do it. It's funny. I ask my boss every year, my mid-year review, if I could take a few months off to do that. 
Of course, the answer is always no. And he says, why do you keep asking me that every year? And I'm like, well, because... I'm waiting for yes. <laughs> yeah, one day you will say yes. <laughs> so... Well, I've heard that you can also do it in sections. That's true. And that's and that's he, probably yeah. where I'm going to go after a few more challenges and, and some more fun hikes. That's probably the direction I'm going. So, yeah, I mean, I would love to be able to do that, but I'm kind of in that same boat. Um, mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't be able to take off five months in a yeah. row to be able to hike the whole length of, of that or any long-distance trail, but I'm hoping to get some more experience on the trail and in a few longer hikes and mm -hmm. you know like i said get into more of a backcountry camping um, experience so for for that one um i guess one of my final questions is you know to give advice to me for someone who's kind of getting into new into uh, camping going into the backcountry and and all of that um what would you what would you tell me um, as far as a day hike or as an overnight? Overnight. Okay, an overnight. Um, you know, it's one thing to have the, the 10 essentials, but it's also another to know how to use all of them. And it's, it's, it's one thing when you're in a calm situation, but in a panic situation, you're thinking a little differently. So I would tell you to enjoy it and have fun, be prepared do your homework, uh, study your map, know where you are, let someone know where you are. Um, yeah, I mean, and, I, and I'll say it again, just, just absolutely have fun with it because it's it's one of the greatest things to, to go out there in the Smokies and, and stay overnight and just on a clear night, seeing all those stars, seeing the Milky Way. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's totally breathtaking. Well, i definitely going to try to put that on my list and I will reach out to you and others um, in the Facebook group to, to ask for their advice when, when the time comes. Um, so I appreciate you coming on today and sharing more about your hiking experience and, you know, the challenges you've been doing and, and all the things you've been doing to connect hikers, because like you said, that, the thing you love the most about the Smokies is the community. Well, you are part of that and mm -hmm. building that community. So I want to thank you for, for having that and giving people the opportunity um, because it's, it's pretty important. It is important. And I absolutely love to encourage and inspire others to get out and do this. There's, there's no reason in the world why anyone couldn't go out and start hiking today or tomorrow and, start with small tra shorter trails and build your way up to being a 900 miler or being an 83 hiker or whatever the challenge may be you can anyone can do it and i want to help encourage those that want to do it do it all right so if anyone has questions what's the best way to reach you um probably on instagram at johnny on the trail all right well i will put that in my show notes and awesome. of course like i said link to all of the different ways that people can connect with you and and uh, ask questions about some of the um, the secret or not so secret trails of the Smokies yeah. and <laughs> and awesome. all of the things that that make it such um, such beautiful country. Yeah. So. Sweet.